Hello, thanks for joining me again. Um, my wife's birthday is coming up and she knows I like to make little things all the time and she loves crossword puzzles. And in doing a crossword puzzle, sometimes it's easier to look at the picture as you're doing it. And in one of these puzzles, they sent her this little piece of cardboard with a slit in it. And you can take this and you can insert your box in here and it stands up like that and it's easier to see it. So she said, could you make me a little bit nicer stand for this box? So if you're interested in something like this, I have kind of a novel way to do it. You want to come out to my shop and take a look, let's go. So what I'm going to do is give you the quick version of how to do this. For some of you guys that are pretty handy, you can take off from there. And then if you would like to, I will show you step by step how I go through this. The materials you will need is a piece of door skin. Uh, this stuff is relatively inexpensive. You can get small pieces of it at Home Depot. They have cutoffs. And some type of spray adhesive. And I bought a remnant of, uh, we used to call this Nagahyde, fake vinyl leather. Uh, those are the supplies you would need. The other thing you're going to have to have is a pattern for yourself. Now, I know you can do this. I, I had this one in the box, but just take a look at it. I'll give you some rough dimensions. That's six and three quarter. There's a rectangle in the middle that's six and three quarter by three and a half. And then on the side you have these flares that uh, go from six and three quarter down to about six and a half and they have a diagonal at the base that is pops out about three and a quarter. So you can play around with that just with a piece of paper. The slit in here is about an inch and a half up and it's about a one-eighth inch cut through there. Now, and you can see what I end up with is very attractive. Uh, this is the piece of material and you can see it bends just like a book. On the back side, it's a little dusty here, but it's a nice brown naga hide. And I'm sure she's just going to love this. So that is what you're going to do. If you want to watch me, hang on, here we go. You'll notice that I'm going to cut this a little larger than its size, but I'm going to go ahead and trace on here with a pencil the actual size. In order to get this diagonal, I'm going to put a mark here and a mark here. This is where the folds are. And I'll go ahead, set my pencil there, and draw those vertical lines. So that's what I have. Now we're going to go to the bandsaw. You can see what I ended up with here is not a great cut. This stuff's like paper and when you go through it with a bandsaw, a little bit of wiggle. I'm going to cheat because I'm going to use a belt sander, but now I'm going to cut these two verticals and I want to stay dead on the line as best I can. Now I'm going to attempt to cut the gap here and what I'm going to do is have the blade stay on the outside of this line and keep the integrity of this rectangle because I'm going to sand down to both lines. And then I'm going to make my second cut just a little bit above this line, kind of scraping the line and that should give me my gap. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. So what I'm going to do, wherever there is no line, I have a slight wiggle. I'm going to look on this side and touch it against the belt until I don't see any light in the gap. I'm going to do that on both of these sides. And where I do have a line, I'm just going to sand down until I touch the line. So I'll make it all as exacting as I can. On these other pieces, again, 
where there's a wiggle, I'm going to touch it against the belt and then I'm going to take it down to the line all the way around. And then when I'm finally done, I'm going to go ahead and put these two together and make sure that they're identical by sanding them identically. If you don't have a belt disc sander, here's the method I used to use in the old days. This is a free Home Depot uh, mixing rod and I just glued a piece of sandpaper on it. I have it held down to my workbench and then I can take my pieces and sand them straight just like that. So there's another idea for you. Now a little hand sanding on the edges and what I'll do is just run my finger along the edge at about a 45 degree angle and knock off that place where you would pick up a splinter. You can see here that I've put blue tape on all the seams so I can hold it together and then flip it over and apply the vinyl to the back side with any, without any slippage. I'm going to apply this rubber cement, this Super 77, on the vinyl just a little bit. And then a good coat on the wood, especially on the edges. I like to let this sit for about 30 seconds to get tacky and then apply it. Well, here we go. We're going to go ahead and take this and put it down, smooth it out. Make sure I don't have any bubbles in there. And I'm going to put a second piece of plywood on the top like this. And grab a can of bolts. Set that on there. And let that sit for maybe 15 minutes. Voila. So now I can take the blue tape off and you can see then when we take it we can turn it like that and set it up. Still need to cut this gap out and I'll do that off camera. I'm going to be using this deft clear wood finish and this is lacquer and it is the real stuff. Uh, we don't even sell it too easily in California. So I'm going to put several coats of this on. So here we are with the finished product. I think it looks rather handsome. Uh, and um, what's nice about it is you can take and fold it up and just put it into a bookshelf and then when you need it, pull it out and you're ready to go. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.